Are we all ready? Good morning all, my name's Simon Crooks. I'm the project director for this amazing straight over my shoulder at the last section of the bridge that was erected last night. I got a text at 3.40 a.m. So uh, there's now a bit of work to do uh, to do all the finishes on top of it. But what a great, great signal for what's going to be an exciting year ahead of us. So on that note, I'd like to welcome the Deputy Premier, Stephen Miles, and also uh, Kelvin Dodd, Chief Operating Officer, who has the privilege of running this once it's open. Thanks so much. Well, today we can really celebrate an epic milestone for one of Brisbane's biggest projects. Uh, the completion of the last span of the bridge here, not quite completed, uh, but you can see it well on its way. Uh, very exciting, connecting uh, Queens Wharf, Brisbane, this uh, epic integrated resort development uh, with South Bank, uh, that great legacy of Expo 88. Uh, these projects are delivering thousands of jobs in construction, but thousands more in operations. And you can really start to see our vision for connecting all of our precincts around the city. This uh, bridge connecting Queens Wharf, Brisbane and the new uh, restaurants and hotels that we will uh, all get to enjoy here uh, with South Bank where we'll have a new theatre. Uh, at either end you'll be able to walk to uh, the Gabba, connecting right round to the Gabba and uh, Brisbane Live uh, at, at Roma Street. Uh, just down the street we'll have our first brand new inner city train station at Albert Street where you'll be able to jump a train uh, to Roma Street, the arena, Suncorp Stadium or in the other direction to the Gabba. So really connect up all of our iconic precincts. It's fantastic to see this uh, span of the bridge uh, in place and to see Queens Wharf Brisbane starting to come together. Uh, thanks Deputy Premier. Uh, it's a milestone moment for the Star Entertainment Group this morning as uh, the last connection of the bridge has finally arrived. Something to be really really excited about. Uh, the bridge gives us accessibility and connectivity uh, between you know what is one of the great river precincts being South Bank and of course uh, the 3.6 billion dollar transformi transformational um, <clears throat> resort that is Queens Wharf and uh, later obviously um, we'll, we'll open the bridge in, uh, in conjunction with our official opening later in the year um, coming close to uh, you know uh, to Christmas but um, this bridge um, you know will probably handle somewhere between 10,000 um, people per day coming across and utilising the bridge, you know, linking two, as I said, iconic um, and uh, remarkable precincts. Um, the bridge itself, uh, it's 320 metres uh, in length, um, and the span, um, of course, reaches up to 75 metres in the sky, so uh, exactly the same height as the Story Bridge. It's something that Brisbane is, uh, you know, going to be truly proud of, and it'll be a legacy leading up to and including um, the, uh, the Olympic Games and past the Olympic Games as we connect um, Brisbane as well. Thank you. Do you have any questions at all? So what you see is all the structural steel. Over the coming weeks, we then have to pour a concrete slab all the way across it, then put paving on on top, and then all the string furniture, lighting. There's actually it's all the bitty work. The last 20% is the complicated bit. We'll probably have the bridge ready and closed up uh, July, August, but we won't open until we open the integrated resort because the pedestrian traffic flows through the integrated resort. They were bolting up the splice plates just to let me know it was all on the, on the final run. So they lifted it at about uh, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock in the morning, and then they put it in position, check it all, and then they bolt it together. So you can hear the banging behind you, so they're probably still doing the odd bolts as well now. Is that a welcome wake-up call? Uh, yes, actually, I was pretty excited. I like it. I would have been there myself, but the guys won't let me go out. Um, this is where European Brisbane started 200 years yes. ago. There, there is. Currently, there's a focus on the Neville Bonner family, and, Neville, and this being the Neville Bonner Bridge. Uh, there is part of the precincts going to be a European heritage piece as well as an indigenous heritage piece. It will be inside uh, some of the buildings to the left here.
the yes. Center. Exactly. So is there going to be anything significant out here because literally where Brisbane's starting? Not planned at the moment, no. This is a highly active area uh, where there'll be pop-ups regularly uh, throughout this whole precinct here. So when the original concept for the plan was to have some memory of how Brisbane started, when this project started? It, it's planned for, a, it's part of the bid and it's planned for inside uh, the DPI of memory serves, Department of Primary Industries and STARS building and um, we still plan on doing that. It's not a piece out on the foreshore. This is obviously made ground here so it would be the river. Do you think that's a good plan? Uh, I think the plans for the heritage buildings is uh, really good. You don't think there should be something to recognise the city of Brisbane style? Uh, I think what's uh, actually most important here is where that's okay. Uh, in the naming of this bridge, we're recognising the incredible contribution of uh, one of our First Nations leaders. Never was the right decision. It takes back to the origins of the city. Do you think there should be something here as a legacy to work for James that this is where European business start? Oh, look, I know there are very significant plans to recognise our heritage with the very important heritage buildings uh, that are here. I'm sure the team are happy to uh, take that feedback on board too. Sky deck behind you. We've got two more sky deck elements to connect. Uh, this one will be is actually in place. You can see it from One William Street, and that will be lifted up in the coming weeks to connect the top of the the, the two grand hotels with the residential tower. All these happen kind of in the dead of the night. Can you expect to be in the dead of the night? Uh, probably. Yes. Is your answer? It's easier to control, and it's safer. Uh, if it's done in the evening. I mean, you can also. Uh, I watched uh, the first piece of the deck segment from South Bank going up in the evening, so it went up at about 9 o'clock if memory serves. And what happened with the result of the reaction last year to improve Sorry, well, uh, can you just repeat? Oh, um, yeah, it's more of a star piece. Yeah. Um, what happened with the reaction last year to improve operation with the So we're working really closely with the special manager um, and also the regulator and our customers and our team to um, obviously win back the trust um, of the community and uh, we're doing that. That'll be a, an ongoing process. Uh, we're well into developing our remediation plan and implementing that. Uh, so uh, hopefully uh, all things will align and we'll return to suitability later this year. Give us some examples of Oh, listen, at the moment I'd prefer not to share that, only for the simple fact that um, the special manager still has to um, officially sign off on that with the regulator um, in, the coming, uh, in the coming weeks and, uh, and that's so we'll hopefully be in a position then to uh, um, you know, um, you know, speed up our, uh, our remediation process and, as I said, return to suitability. I don't. I don't have visibility over that. Um, my remit is uh, is Queen's Wharf, unfortunately. So, uh, so I can't really comment on that. Okay. Thanks. Oh, you do? Okay. All right then. <laughs> I thought that was strange. <laughs> I was going to take it though. <laughs> Oh, look, I imagine that's an incredible relief for uh, him and his family. I'm sure all Queenslanders uh, welcome him back to, back to Queensland. On the subject of news crime, uh, has your government allowed enough time for public feedback on the proposed new news justice uh, uh, These laws are very uh, significant. They're designed to address concerns about community safety. Uh, I think there's about uh, the same number of people saying that's not long enough as saying they should be introduced faster. Uh, so we're uh, doing our best to get them in place as quickly as we can for community safety while also allowing the community and stakeholders uh, to have their say through a committee process. Uh, 
look what we've heard from the community is that they want to see greater ramifications uh, when young people breach bail and that is precisely why uh, we have moved to introduce that change. The Northern Territory Royal Commission recommended though that police only arrest a child and not person for breach of bail where the breach occurs as a result or in connection with further offending or if there's a risk of not offending, uh, not offending the court. What would happen to Queensland? Will it be summary regular sentences? Could a child be arrested if there's um, you know, curfew, non compliance? Uh, uh, this offence will be able to apply uh, with, uh, uh, in an instance uh, where a young offender breaches bail. Uh, obviously, uh, police have a range of tools available, a range of discretion available. Uh, whether they arrest or uh, use other methods to um, to, a, to address uh, breach of bail, but this is all about making sure that people comply with bail. It's all about putting community safety first, uh, as well as allowing us to intervene early uh, to ensure that offending doesn't occur. There have been calls for tougher restrictions on the Look, there are already restrictions on the purchase of knives. Uh, what we've done though is acted uh, to give police a greater capacity to identify people who are carrying knives. Uh, that winding trial has now been very significantly expanded uh, after it was successful at intercepting uh, a lot of knives on the Gold Coast. Oh, look, I'm pleased, uh, really pleased to report that our health workers uh, have done a great job in the last quarter to, uh, to address elective surgery. They did 6% more surgeries in the last quarter than the quarter before. Uh, we do continue to see a backlog from when elective surgery was closed down during COVID, as well as uh, increasing demand, lots more people going into the system. But our health workers and our hospitals are working really hard. As I say, they've delivered 6% more elective surgery in the last reporting quarter than the quarter before. Thank you. Thank you.